And welcome back to the Heart of Chaos. I'm Javier once again, and I welcome you back to The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. In the last episode, we completed a set of trials to open our way, open up the way to the Lare Room Mining Facility. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to do this without a hitch, because getting here... Oh, getting here... Getting here was frustrating. Welcome to the third dungeon in Skyward Sword, the Lani Room Mining Facility. Uh, I will state outright, this is probably my least favorite dungeon in Skyward Sword, but that in no means makes this a bad dungeon. I enjoy it quite a lot. It's just that it's my least favorite because, well, I guess overall the design's not the best. Uh, it's not... I mean, again, picking, calling it my least favorite is definitely... Like, just kind of nitpicking for a reason. Uh, there's no real particular thing I dislike about this dungeon. Uh, and if there's something that really goes wrong, I will point it out. But uh, I don't really see a need to do that right now, anyway. So, as you notice, with this dungeon is going to revolve a lot, around the, a lot around the sink sand we saw outside. And it's going to have a bunch of enemies that are going to be weak to bombs, at least from the beginning. Uh, the bombs are going to be very useful for you to use. And I would recommend you have a maximum stock upon entering, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. Alright, so these guys over here, these guys are a little annoying. Oh god! No, don't kill him, I want to actually look at them. This is Arakaz. This larval monster is said to live for 1,000 years, during which time it is continuing, continually growing. Though the larva is small in size, it is quite ferocious and is often found in swarms beneath the sand. It tends to leap toward moving objects such as yourself. As you saw when it latched onto us, we've defeated four of, the, four of them, and our battle rating is very strong because they don't do much damage to you. In fact, they can do minimum damage unless you actually decide to let them. If you're not quick enough, they can do damage. Anyway, what we want to do is we want to activate these switches, and that is going to be a very central mechanic inside of this dungeon, which is going to be wall running switches. Okay, oh, that was close. Not only being in those situations where my stamina meter starts to slowly drop. Well, I mean, is that close to being depleted, I should say. It always is dropping if you're playing the game. Anyway, that was an optional room. It only gives you 20 rupees. Not too big of a deal. Um, as you can see, there's still more areas in this room that we need to bomb down and see. Go ahead and toss that in there. Uh, that switch over there is the one we're going to have to worry about. As you may have noticed, we have no way of getting our bombs over there, but... We got the Hook Beetle earlier, so the Hook Beetle is going to provide us the biggest use in that sense. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and... What a jerk! He knew that bomb was useful! I'm, I'm going to kill these guys and just see what's in this room. Alright. He knew that bomb was useful. Alright. So let's see, that's, let's hope that doesn't happen again and we're going to kill him outright. You know, I was going to let him live. Well, at least for a little bit, but uh, now he, he just deserves what he got. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to get the bomb this time and uh, place it over in the receptacle and blow up that bit. Also, I should point out that during the animation of the beetle coming back to Link's arm, if you go ahead and put the beetle away in the middle of the animation, you skip most of the animation. Thus, it's just a small speedrunning tactic that's not too big, but I imagine if you're good at it, it would save you a lot of time. Okay. So now we have the way forward in front of us. So let's make our way across the sand again. Oh, oh that always scares me when my stamina meter is that close. Or the Super Mario 64 health bar, because I've joked about that before, and so have many other people. Keep in mind there is also a save... Um, save statue right over here. Bird statue, if I must be correct, which I feel the need to be correct. Though it saves, so that's usually what I use it for. Okay. 
Remember that you can always use a bird statue to go to the beginning of the dungeon, or, or really exit the dungeon, if you feel that you've accomplished something or you need to go back for whatever reason. Alright, so now we have these, these, uh, Hydrostalfos? Astaldra, that's what it is. It's, it's very hard to remember a lot of these silly names, but, uh, you understand the monster. Anyway, I don't need to know this beat. It's going to attack me, Fee. Its eyes are red. And we've only seen one of them. Oh, no! Oh, wow, that killed it. You know, that didn't look like it should've. Ah, oh, 20 rupees, that's generous. Alright, let's kill this other Staldra. See, that doesn't kill it, but the one that was felt wrong does. So I guess this doesn't have the same reach. W whatever, you know, you know, I'm still gonna call BS on that. Anyway, we have a locked door over here that we can do nothing with, but we have a room over here that we can completely explore. Also, you can tell we cannot get in that room because it is blocked by iron bars, and uh, falling is never an answer. So we only have this way. What do we do over here? Well, you can go ahead and push these boxes. Why would you want to do that, though? When you could break them. Wait, I remember being able to break these box. Oh, you break them with bombs, which I will not waste. You also notice that in this dungeon, I have oh sweet bombs. How neat. Uh, let me actually finish a train of thought. You could break these boxes with bombs, or not. And you could also see that these piles of sand have come into the dungeon from what we've seen outside. There is a reason for that. They have a use. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and move this box over here. And then we're going to use the box to get up and continue our way forward. You also notice that while we go on this side, it seems that pile of sand is preventing us from moving that particular box. Bit of a bummer. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward. Into an ominous black room! Ooh, spooky! Alright. I'm not sure why there's a transition period there. Uh, usually they do that for boss rooms in the Zelda franchise, but for here it just seems to transition into another area. I imagine this room is pretty big, so that's probably why it needs a load, but uh, I don't know. Alright, so if we look around, we really don't have much to go on. Uh, there's a bird statue here, a room we can't access, and another room we can't access. And a yellow choo-choo! Hey, hey! Stop it! I act prepared and then suddenly get electrified. See, he goes off the edge, but sadly, if things fall off the edge, it does not count towards your battle rating and you actually killing them. So be forewarned, if you're trying to get a high battle rating and the amount of monsters killed for whatever reason, you do not want to knock them off ledges. You want to be the one to deal the finishing blow. All right, so if we drop a bomb on that set of boxes through with the hook beetle, we now have access to another yellow choo-choo. Oh, come on! And I didn't even swing! Damn it! Not a fan of electrified enemies. They are mean to me. Uh, be forewarned, if you ever want to come down this ladder, it's best to take the ladder itself. Don't jump, because that's that's always bad. All right, and we got some keys. And what do you know, they're electrified keys. Do they have a specific name? Thunder keys! They do! Wow! Found in desert habitats, these winged monsters are attracted to dark places such as caves. Their internal organs generate electricity for attacking prey. They often gather in colonies, are active at night, and sleep in the day. Those who come too close and awaken them often fall victim to attack. And we've defeated one of the enemies, so there's no battle analysis ready for us. Uh, let's just go ahead and slice it. Ooh, a heart! Mine! 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 Uh, okay, I actually get it this time. Alright. And you may have noticed that there's a treasure chest up here. What is inside the treasure chest? Well, voila la la! You get a small key. You can see that this dungeon is a bit more backtracking than we're used to. Also, if you go up this ladder, there's a box in your way. You can't do anything with this ladder. Alright, so we're gonna go down the ladder. This is how I recommend it. Jumping off, you might make it, but there's a good chance you won't. You do not know how many times I've actually decided that was a good idea to jump and to move faster, and suddenly I fall off the ledge. Never a fun time. Never a fun time. Okay, so we got a small key. What do we want to use that for? Well, we want to use this on the locked door, obviously. There is nowhere else you can use this key as of, mo as of this moment, so this is the only way to go. And of course, it's a room filled with sand. Lots and lots of sand. 
And a very junky robot. Huh. I wonder what this is used for. But what we do need to worry about right now is this pufferfish, or better known as a froak. It's a froaky. Oh my god, froaky, you really let yourself go. Though this odd creature is cowardly by nature, it will expose an array of densely packed defensive spines when approached or provoked. You could just call them needles. You have defeated zero of this enemy, so... Yeah, blah, blah. Uh, if you hit them while they're spiked, nothing will... They'll be pushed back. If you hit them while they are normal, uh, they will explode. So actually, a good idea is to skyward strike into them, uh, or hit them with something like a bomb or something, but not nothing too major. Alright, so we got another one here. And let's skyward strike him. As you can see, that didn't do much. Uh, we can actually hit him into the wall there. Uh, yeah, that's one of the main strategies is to hit them into a wall and they'll explode. Uh, before warned, if you're too close, you will obviously be hurt by the blast. Ah! The scariest monster in the game! Speaking of scariest monsters in the game, uh, I know I'm not the only one to have despised Rededs in my time. And only recently did I figure out why I hated Rededs when I was little. Which I found to be a fun fact. Um, I never really felt uncomfortable around Deku Babas, if I want to point that out. Uh, until Twilight Princess, where I learned that in Twilight Princess, I was bothered by the Deku Babas there. And I never figured out why. Till recently. I despise being pinned. I think it, I don't know if there's a phobia for this, uh, but... I do despise being pinned, and that's what the Rededs really freak me out about. Any other enemy, like even wall masters and such, anything that grabbed you scared me. That's a bad idea to jump down there. Uh, right? Yeah, that is. Huh. Hang on. Oh, oh. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know why I didn't see this. Alright, so you want to jump down here and use your hook beetle to get a bomb up there. That's what you do. But yeah, I despise being pinned, and that's what the Rededs were made for in uh, Ocarina of Time. I wasn't scared of them in Twilight Princess, which I wasn't even sure why. Though they weren't the same barrels of death. Uh, I hated them in Wind Waker, so I know it's, it just it feels gratifying to know why I was afraid of Rita's in the past. I mean, they weren't even that scary of an enemy if you look at it now. It's just juggleworthy. I still am uncomfortable around them because I do despise being pinned. Or grabbed, or unable to react, really. So, that's that confirmed. Anyway, so we're gonna go hop up here, and there's a switch. What does the switch do? It opens up a way to a time shift stone. Oh my god, I said it right. You do not want to get off the switch, however, because it'll just close that up. So you're just gonna have to use your hook beetle and uh, do your amazing flying skills that you learned from probably playing Ace Combat. And we're gonna activate the time shift stone in this room to show how alive this place actually was. By the way, Bet you don't know what those guys are. Those guys are Bemos. Bemos got chained, changed a lot throughout the years. Uh, I do not... I, just, I, just, I don't know. They've changed in every single Zelda game, and most enemies do. Um, in this game, it's relative around motion control, obviously. Slice the blue line. Poke the eye. And you kill it. If they seem... They manage to catch on to you, they will hit... They will continue to smack at you until you... Until you take damage. Which... Is annoying. Also, these conveyor belts are now active, so be forewarned that is going to send you flying in a direction you probably don't want to be in. If for some reason you manage to make it down there, uh, well, good luck to you because it takes a while to get back up. All right, now that the quicksand is all gone, we can go down this way, land on a platform, and we have a conveyor belt. You can see that stamina fruit is dropping along with these spiked balls of death and destruction. Not sure what they're manufacturing here. Uh, before we go there, it's always good to explore, so let's go up this ladder and see what it has to offer us. It has a switch! Good thing we came here! What does the switch do? It actually allows us to move forward, so if you didn't come up here and move down that conveyor belt, uh, yeah, you're gonna regret that decision. Alright, let's jump down. Oh my god! Okay, okay, not in my happy place. That was stupid of me to do. I really should not have jumped there. Okay, so let's go ahead and run down this conveyor belt. It takes a little bit to get through, but it's not necessarily too difficult, especially you have plenty of time to react towards the giant spiky balls of death. 
Uh, being the good little adventure we are, we never want to go the right way first. We always want to come up this... We always want to go the wrong way. Um, there is what you can do up here is go up another set of conveyor belts to explore a little bit. As you can guess, since there is an iron bar blocking our way, there's a switch up above on the top of this conveyor belt, and we can definitely get up there. Oh my god, that was close. And we're up above. Oh, hey! Ow! I hate lightning! So much hate for the lightning! See, this dungeon is cool and I wish I liked it! Er, sorry. And I wish I didn't hate lightning when it shocked you like that. Alright, well let's go ahead and ride the conveyor belt down. Uh, no need to worry about it anymore. And there's a room here. We now have two choices. That way or this way. Since that way's less lightning, we're gonna go... Since that way's more lightning, we're gonna go this way first. And what do you know? I picked the right way. That wasn't planned at all! Okay, so let's go ahead and jump down onto this ladder. And we have to do a bit of platforming, but why is this platforming annoying? Well, the reason it's annoying is because of these guys. They really block the way. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to be clever. Yes, that worked, I guess. Um, hang on. Alright, let's, let's be smart. Oh, okay, yeah, you, you do need, you do need to take the right way. Because of spikes. That's right. I'm stupid. See, here's me thinking, like, every single time I go through this dungeon. Oh my god! I always manage to, uh, feel, I always feel like I'm wasting time doing it the, the way I always do it. Which is to slowly kill those creatures and move your way along the bombed rocks when in really the point of this dungeon I mean not sorry the point of, not of this dungeon oh my god I wish I could speak yeah this is the right way hooray we killed something to go forward I don't feel bad about my actions at all not at all all right so let's go up on top of this ladder uh, likely be assailed by more of the grabby grabby arrakas there they are uh, well, you know, let's just open up the treasure chest. They can fall. Did we see them in the shot? No, we don't get to see them. But we got the item of the dungeon, which is the Gust Bellows. It is an ancient and mystical device capable of blowing an endless gust of wind. Alright. This is basically a vacuum that never sucks in. It always blows. And, uh, you guys are annoying. This is a really fun item to use on, in this dungeon. And, uh, well, you'll figure that it's in this dungeon. And in the next episode of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, we're going to use this to clean up around here, because boy is it a mess. Continue on in the dungeon. I'm going to be okay out of here, and I'll see you all then.